Hello, thank you for calling Solara Property Management. My name is Katie. How can I help you today? Hey, we were just looking at a couple of properties that are listed on your website. We're really looking for a place that specifically has a pool. Uh, we've got a few kids and we wanna make sure that there are lifeguards there as well. Uh, really just a lifestyle place to live. Thank you so much for sharing what you're looking for. Based on your interest in a property with a pool and lifeguard service, I'd recommend looking at 124 Ocean Crest Court, also known as the Azure House. This building features cellar pools that are attended by a lifeguard during all open hours. Nice, okay, where's that located? 124 Ocean Crest Court, also called the Azure House, is located in Aurora City. It's a beautiful lifestyle-focused property with great amenities for families, including the lifeguard-attended pools and a seasonal rooftop spa. If you'd like, I can connect you with our leasing agent, Dana Sherwood, who can provide more details, schedule a tour, or answer any questions about availability. That'd be amazing. You like Thank you so much. Let's do it right now. Absolutely. I'll connect you with Dana Sherwood, our leasing agent for the Azure House right now. Now, you just listened to an AI voice agent receptionist system that we've had running live in production for the past two years. This system has handled thousands of calls and saved hundreds of hours for our client. And today I wanna to give you a complete rundown on some of the numbers and some of the data that we've got over the past two years related to this agent. I'm gonna run through some of the main benefits of this system that we've seen over the past two years as well. I'll also showcase some of the key agent capabilities that this system has to really give you some ideas as to what's possible with these systems and what it can handle. After this, I'll do a complete rundown of the actual voice agent itself, having a look at the prompt and some of the function calls that we have built out. So this includes the prompt on retail as well as an automation workflow that we have on make.com. The goal for this video is to showcase the power of these voice agent receptionist systems and to show you that these are capable systems that can run in production. So if you are a business owner who is looking to get one of these systems built out for your business or you're somebody who's looking to build these systems and sell them to other people, this is gonna be a great video for you. And just a heads up, if you do wanna get one of these systems built out for your business, you can actually reach out to me and my team by using the link in the description. We've worked with plenty of companies in many different industries to get these voice agent receptionist systems built out. So if you are in need of getting one of these systems, please reach out. All right, so jumping right into it, I've just created this quick board to showcase some of the key data points and things that we've learned over the past two years. So once again, the use case here is an inbound receptionist system. So this means that we're getting incoming calls coming through. This is a phone number that is sitting on our client's website and within in their email signature and other areas where clients of this company are able to call in and inquire about certain properties. Once again, the industry here is property management. And over the past two years, we've been roughly seeing around about three to four calls handled per day on average. So obviously some days you're gonna be seeing more calls than others. This is averaged over the 720 days. So obviously some days we see 10 calls, some days we see zero calls. If it's a weekend or a holiday, obviously there's gonna be a lot less calls than your typical uh, work days, but on average, three to four calls over that time horizon. And that has equaled roughly two and a half thousand calls over the past two years. From this, we've had an average call duration between one to five minutes. So obviously not every call goes the exact same amount of time. But if it's an easy inquiry or a direct transfer, that's typically going to be between at about one to two minutes. Whereas somebody with a more in-depth inquiry who is asking a lot of questions will range past five minutes. Previously, before we implemented this system, this was about 20 minutes of calls per day, plus the time of doing the admin stuff. So let's say somebody wanted to be transferred or have an email sent, or they wanted to book an appointment or something like this. Usually that admin stuff had to be done separately to the call. So it would take you know even longer to fulfill the request. And so roughly that was about 30 to 40 minutes per day being consumed by these calls having to come through. And so obviously that was the beforehand of data taking up 30 to 40 minutes. Now with our system, it's significantly less. The only calls that are being responded to uh, if there is sort of an emergency or if there's a call transfer, which obviously doesn't happen as much as your typical general inquiries. And so that has been around about 486 hours saved over the past two years. That's obviously a lot of hours that can now be reallocated to more important tasks. Now, specifically for this client, it was actually the business owner himself who was handling all these calls, which obviously wasn't great for his time. And I've just noted here that if his rate was $100 an hour, which to be honest, I think would be a lot more than that. That's about $48,600 pretty much saved over the past two years, minus all of the benefits of the voice agent itself. So once again, the hourly rate is probably a lot more than that for the business owner himself. But in the typical case, I don't think the business owner should have been taking those calls anyway. A more likely case that we see with some of our other clients is that they have a receptionist who is taking these calls, although it's obviously not their main job. They're doing a lot of other admin tasks as well. 
And these calls are typically just taking away from the other stuff that they could be doing. This has been incredibly beneficial from a time standpoint, but there are obviously some other benefits as well, which some of them aren't that obvious. So number one is the fact that these systems have an instant pickup. If you go ahead and start to call it, the AI is going to pick up immediately because it is a software program. They're not gonna be waiting for somebody to come to them. An industry like property management, where somebody could be inquiring about leasing or getting information about a particular property, the fact that we're able to answer that call immediately and provide that information that they're looking for as quickly as possible does help out with this sort of speed to lead type system where the business over the past two years and all these calls and everybody that's reaching out to them would no doubt about it have a percentage increase in the amount of leases they're able to sign. Next to this, we've got 24 seven responses. So given that it picks up instantly, if you call it at 3 a.m., it will be picking up as well. And so this is great because this company actually works in multiple different time zones and they're not able to always pick up the phone or be available at the best time. And so this completely eliminates that problem. And once again, contributes to the fact that they're able to answer those questions as quickly as possible and potentially get a percentage increase in leases signed and other stuff as well. Unlimited knowledge is another great one here as well. It's pretty difficult to, off the top of your head, remember every person that works in your company and all of the properties that you have in a database, especially when it is changing month to month. But obviously AI has that capability. So we're able to answer questions about all of the different properties that they had listed. And not only is it able to answer that question, but it's able to do so pretty much immediately. And once again, just contributing to that customer experience. Next up, we've got quicker calls as well. So the fact that we don't have to be doing the manual data entry after the call, the fact that the voice agent itself as function calls directly, it is able to process and send emails all automatically itself. And overall, because we are saving so much time, we're obviously now able to reallocate staff to work on the more important tasks, which in itself is a benefit to the business because they are now making progress on more meaningful stuff. So hopefully that makes sense. That's really some of the key main points and some of the main benefits that we've been able to verify over the past two years with this specific client. And just for some more context, this right here are some of the key agent capabilities. There's about 18 main key agent capabilities. And you can pause the video and have a read through this list. Otherwise it's a lot of the basic stuff that you can imagine from an industry like this, where we have to identify the caller's reason, collect information, route the different inquiries to the correct contact or email addresses for different properties, processing certain requests, handling the different inquiry types of leases and maintenance requests, solicitation of calls, accounting and payment inquiries, answering and processing all different types of questions, tax related questions, purchase applications, and then obviously our transfer of call system, which we've got set up to handle quite different depending on if it's within or without business hours and if it's an emergency. And if they're inquiring about different properties as well, we're able to use quite a smart live transfer system on retail to be able to transfer the call to the right person based on sort of a database of different people for different inquiry types. And it's able to handle it quite intelligently. So hopefully you've got a good idea as to what we were able to build here, some of the benefits, some of the data and some of the key capabilities of the system. This right here is Retail AI. This is where we built out the voice agent system. Now I have redacted or replaced a lot of the key sensitive information from our actual client system. So a lot of the data that you're gonna see here is fake information. Uh, obviously Aurora City, as you heard at the start of the video, is not a real city, it sounds pretty cool, uh, but it's not a real place and this, all this information has been sort of redacted. But otherwise the actual prompt and the structure and everything that's included is exactly the same for the real production ready system. I'll just do a walkthrough of the prompt and everything that's included before jumping into some of the function calls that we have built out as well. So if you have watched any of my previous videos about prompting AI voice agents or just prompting AI systems in general, you will know that I like to categorize each part of the prompt, defining a role or a persona, as well as the set of tasks as sort of individual subheadings in the prompt. And so this is what you're gonna see quite a bit of here. We've got our persona at the top, which has the role as an expert property manager receptionist named Katie for Solera Property Management, proficient in handling incoming calls about the properties they manage. And just some other information here about the main objective to take inbound calls and follow the correct steps based on the call reason and then just adding in some main key skills of customer service, conflict resolution, collection procedures, emergency response handling, really just adding to this is who you are and this is what you need to do. It seems like a small thing. It doesn't seem like it's a big thing, although not doing this can end up in derailing the conversation, which we've seen quite a bit. And so every time that we've had to add a flow to the system over the past couple of years, typically, and usually we'll come back to this skill section right here and make sure that it is included as a skill. Next up, we've got the knowledge base. And what you'll see here is a series of properties that we've added directly into the prompt as the knowledge base. Now I do think that this is a key point to highlight. So we haven't actually used the native knowledge base here to upload our information related to the properties. And the main reason for this is to simply increase the accuracy and the capability of our agent 
to get the right information. So if you have ever used an, an external knowledge base system or a RAG system, you'll know that it just isn't as accurate as adding information directly into the prompt. The reason for this is that it has to do a dedicated retrieval to get information from the knowledge base. And whenever it does that, it has to send a specific request on the information that it's looking for and will only receive back a limited amount of chunks related to that information, which increases the probability that we're not gonna get all of the information relevant to our search. So not to make it too complicated, but ultimately if you can put in the prompt, it is gonna be more accurate. And so that's what we've done here. Obviously, if we had a large amount of information like giant PDFs and Word documents, we would have to use the knowledge base in that case. But for this specific build, we made sure that we only had the most critical information needed for each property so that we could put it in the prompt itself. And this has made the system far more accurate and has reduced the amount of errors and mix-ups that it's had because it is directly inserted into the prompt. After our knowledge base section, we've got a dedicated section called rules. Now these rules have kind of acted like our notes. This is something that we've kind of just added to over the past two years. When new things have come up, we've been maintaining the system as well every month. So usually the client might come up with a new thing that they want to add. And typically in the rules section, if it isn't a major flow to add, we'll just add it in the rules section. So you can have a look at some of the stuff we've added here. Clarity and simplicity. This is stuff that we probably added at the start, but going down a bit, all inquiries regarding Horizon Tower. Uh, for all inquiries, notify the caller to contact the on-site concierge desk at this number right here. So that is likely something that the client wanted to add. And so we just added that into the rule section, or it's possible that for whatever reason, the knowledge base wasn't able to, to do this properly. So we had to re-clarify this in the rule section. Number six, you can see here, all inquiries regarding the, the sea breeze drive property. We need to let the caller know that we no longer manage this property. So in this case, I believe we had to remove a property from the knowledge base because we no longer serve them although some people would still call in about that property because we, we used to manage it. Uh, and then in this case, what we did is we just added in a line here in our rules section that said, you know, this is what we should do in the case of this type of an inquiry comes out. So it doesn't require a dedicated flow and a dedicated section to handle it, but we've added it just in the rules section. Beneath this, we've got the steps to follow section. And this is gonna be really the key area for all of our main tasks, all of the main sort of key capabilities that I outlined on the board here with these sort of 18 different types of inquiries that can come through and different types of things that we need to do. This is pretty much what you're gonna see listed throughout here. So we've got steps for callers interested in leasing an apartment or the specific residence. And we've just added in examples to capture their name and the property address and to tell them that we need to you know, notify this particular individual who's related to this property. And then we've got flows for the lease extensions and flows for maintenance repairs. And we've really given it a numbered step-by-step -step approach for it to follow through with. We really wanna make it quite as simple as possible. So in the case that somebody has a maintenance repair, we said step one is to collect the property address. Step two is to identify which address it is. And depending on the type of address that it is, we're gonna be going down a particular pathway. If somebody's looking for a property manager, we've also got a three-step process as well to capture that address, find out where they are, and then lead them down the right path. And so ultimately, it's a very similar flow of just understanding who they are, what property they're referring to, uh, and then just moving them down the pathway to get to the right person that would be relevant uh, to that particular inquiry type. So you could think of it as a smart routing system here. There obviously are some inquiries that we are able to just answer over the phone with our property knowledge base. But for the most part, we are just going to be routing people to the right area. Scrolling down further, once again, it's pretty much very, very similar for all the different types of inquiries that we have. Steps for speaking to a specific superintendent, resell or purchase applications, reference letters. We're really just constantly adding on top of the main steps to do so with particular inquiry types uh, and just listing out, you know, in a numbered format, what exactly should happen. So that is pretty much it for the complexity of this agent. Now, overall, in terms of voice agents that we built before, this isn't actually the most complex one we've ever built, but in terms of results and feedback and benefits that we've had out of this system, it's been one of the most beneficial systems that we've ever built. And I think that this is a good note to make. The simpler that we can make these systems, the more straightforward that we can make them, the most amount of benefit you're gonna get out of them. Now, we could definitely add some more complexity to this and I'll showcase the bake automation in just a minute. But I think you should always be thinking about implementing the highest ROI and lowest risk system first, starting there, and then just adding things to it over time. This right here is the end of call report make.com automation. So this is something that will run at the end of every call. So this actually isn't a function call in itself. If I jump over to retail AI, you'll actually see that there is no direct function call that we have set up here, other than our end call and transfer call default functions, obviously. This will only run after the call has happened. So somebody's called in, they're looking to speak with somebody, uh, it will tell them that somebody will eventually reach out to them uh, and this will only trigger through this automation once the call has hung up 
So the way that this system works is that the call is gonna come through through the webhook. It's gonna hit this open AI module right here. Now this isn't gonna be doing the AI work to classify the transcript. This is actually just being used to format a phone number, which if I click into this, you can see right here. So all that we're really doing here is just taking the phone number from retail and turning it into a readable format. This was just a client recommendation. So that when we send out an email, we've got a nicely formatted phone number for the staff members to be able to call. But most of the power in terms of analyzing that transcript is actually happening here on retail already. And if we have a look at the post call data extraction tab right here, essentially what we've defined is a series of variables and prompts associated with those variables based on the transcript of the call. So for example, we've created a, you can think of it as a variable called call reason. And if I click into this with the edit button, you'll see that we have a description, which you can really just think of as a prompt. And this has prompted it to analyze the transcript and have a look at the reason for the call. So this is the call reason. The call reason should either be a new lease inquiry, includes leasing renewals and lease extensions, maintenance repairs, somebody has been requested or a property manager inquiry. And so this has been specifically prompted to output one of these values based on the call reason. And then if we come over to make.com, this webhook report right here is going to provide us with all of these variables from this report. And we can use this as a variable within make.com to determine which pathway to go down. So if I have a look at this right here, this flow that's happening with the other call reason, we've added in the specific variable that has come directly from all of the values from retail. And we can see here that it is just set up as a condition that says if it does not contain maintenance or repairs, doesn't contain new lease inquiry, doesn't require this name, doesn't require this, then it's an other inquiry type. But we can see here, if it does contain this word or property manager, then we're going down this pathway. So hopefully you can see how we're getting these values. We're essentially just assigning them at the post call step right after retail, which is then getting sent off in a webhook to this automation. And so that is pretty much it. The call reason right here on the post call data retrieval is really the main field that we're using to make this routing decision in the workflow here. This is the only variable they're actually using. And most of the other fields here are just being used in the actual emails themselves. We've got a short call summary and a full call summary. We're just using these in the emails themselves. Hopefully I didn't make it any more complicated than it needed to be. But otherwise this is a good strategy and approach to build out a more reliable function call. If we were to build this out as a dedicated function in the actual agent itself, it is possible that we'd put too much stress or strain on the agent to determine what type of inquiry it is and, and which pathway we need to go down and which API we need to call. And it's possible that that could cause some errors. So this is why we've decided to do it as an end of call report that no matter what, we can log it in the Google Sheets to review later and we're able to use the more conditional flow to determine who should be actually getting this email. So that is it for the voice agent that we've been running for over two years now. Hopefully you can see a lot of the benefits that we've been seeing the client has been seeing now as well. For really any company that's in this situation, getting these types of calls and needing to have these types of calls handled, it really is a no brainer. There's honestly no disadvantage to doing a system like this. There are so many different levels as to how you can automate your phone system from a very basic routing system to more advanced systems that actually do the function calls live in the call with booking systems and with CRM integrations. All of this is possible. Obviously, I've got plenty of videos on my channel if you wanna check them out and learn more about the voice agents. Now, if you do wanna get access to 50 plus AI agent templates and courses, I've got a completely free AI school community linked in the description. We've got over 20,000 members now, which you can jump in the community and ask questions and get feedback and really just network with everybody else. It's a great place if you're looking to get started in building your own AI business or you're looking to get AI integrated in your business.